Why would you want this German beer mug's help in calculating the effects of time dilation on GPS satellites? Because it's Einstein! Or maybe not, because that's not what it's called in German. It is, by the way, what it's called in English, and it does come from an older word in a specific dialect of German, so it's not wrong to call it a Stein when you're speaking English. Modern German, though, has a few different words. The most neutral of them is probably Bierkrug. The word Stein means stone. But enough of the linguistics lesson, let's talk about the things that Germans drink beer out of. And if what you're imagining is something like this, well, you won't actually find a lot of Germans drinking out of that. You will, however, find a lot of tourists buying them as souvenirs because for the most part, that's what they are, souvenirs. If you have found a German beer stein among your late grandfather's belongings, it's unlikely to be worth anything. It's probably not even designed to drink beer out of. This is more like the sort of thing that Germans, at least in the south of the country, might genuinely have drunk beer out of. It has the logo of a local beer brewery on it, but apart from that, it is just a, a large mug. Now, of course, there were different types and designs available, but you get the general idea. It's supposed to be functional. And some did have a lid. This doesn't have anything to do with the Black Death, as some people assume, but quite simply to stop insects falling into the beer. It's that obvious. These days, Germans usually serve beer in glasses. This is true even at the Munich Oktoberfest, where they started using glass as early as 1892. That way, customers could be sure that they weren't being given short measures or dishwater. And who needs a fiddly lid when you can just use a simple beer mat? So where did this come from? Well, it all started back in the mid-19th century, when manufacturers started mass-producing stoneware beer mugs with fancy carvings on them. And this started something of a fashion. People started collecting these beer mugs as a hobby. They weren't drinking out of them, they were just collecting them. And this gave rise to the idea of commemorative steins. Men who had completed their military service would be presented with steins decorated with motifs related to the regiment that they served in. And student fraternities would do something similar. Again, these steins weren't for actual use. They were put on display in people's homes, where visitors would notice them and be suitably impressed. Oh, I see you were in the Royal Bavarian 3rd Infantry Regiment. I am suitably impressed. In most cases, though, what you have is probably not going to be one of those genuine antiques. It's more likely to be a souvenir made in a factory and sold to a tourist. It's worth pointing out that the German Wikipedia article has to tell its readers that non-Germans consider steins to be typically German. For their part, Germans usually associate decorative beer steins with Bavaria, but in actual fact, the best known manufacturer of steins is Villeroy und Boch, which has its headquarters in Mettlach, which is in the Saarland. So if your stein has the initials VB or the word Mettlach stamped on the bottom, that's where it was made. So enjoy your decorative beer stein, but just bear in mind that it's probably not a piece of history. It's designed for you to put on display for your visitors to see. Oh, I see you visited Heidelberg. I am suitably impressed. With a stein. There's a guy behind me emptying the dog poop container. Related to the military, to the to the something or other. I can't get this sentence out.